Hello everybody. In this episode, we are going to cover D614G. Is coronavirus mutating into a deadly strain? Uh, you may have heard of this uh, D614G when the media is reporting quite widely that the coronavirus is now mutating to something really, really serious. So the key question is that is SARS-CoV-2 mutating? SARS-CoV-2 is, as you know, the virus responsible for COVID-19. That is, SARS-CoV-2 is the scientific name of coronavirus. So this virus is, of course, contains, uh, it's an RNA virus. So it has an RNA molecule, like just like our DNA molecule. And the mutation uh, is basically point mutation. That is basically one base of this, that is one letter of this RNA is changing to another letter. So molecular biologists call this as point mutation or single nucleotide polymorphisms. And there is a set way of uh, naming these uh, SNPs. So as you know, this mutation is named as D614G. What does that mean? D is basically an amino acid. So basically the amino acid is called aspartic acid. That is what the letter D stands for. So uh, originally it was aspartic acid that you know that the codon coding for the amino acid is aspartic acid uh, at, at the position 6.4. So 6.4 is a position in the RNA genome of this coronavirus. And because of the mutation, it has now changed to G. G is called for glycine. So aspartic acid, instead of aspartic acid, uh, these are amino acid constituents of the protein. So the spike protein uh, gets a little bit transformational modification. So basically the structure of the coronavirus spike protein changes because of this uh, mutation. You know, D to G mutation at 614 position. So as you can see that, you know, the probability uh, uh, during January 2020 has been like D, D, February is also D. Then March slowly G started emerging and by April and May G is now uh, everywhere, not D. Originally it was D and, but at this position now it's like uniformly across the world it is G now. You know, so that is exactly what you call the natural selection is happening, right? It's evolving. So the question to answer to the question is SARS-CoV-2 mutating is definitely yes. You know, so this is uh, uh, the phylogenetic tree uh, constructed with the various haplotypes of this virus. As you can see that this is a time tree in the, in the X axis. You can see this is a time 2019, uh, you know, December, then uh, 2020. January, February, by the February, this particular D614G mutant started arising and uh, now it is uh, everywhere around the world you can see that. So what exactly it's, uh, this one is all for? So it's basically it has got implications on the structure of the, the spike protein. You know, as you know, this has got, these are the coronavirus and the viral structure has got the spike protein and the spike protein binds to something called ACE2 receptor of our host cell, especially epithelial cell in our lungs. So, uh, you know, ACE2 is nothing but angiotensin converting enzyme, uh, you know, two, uh, second variant of it. So this is where the spike protein attached to. So the attachment, uh, everything has to do with the structure of the spike protein and the structure is coded by the genome, right? The RNA molecule, you know? So in a very simplistic manner, ACE2 receptor is like this, you know, the triangle. And here is where the coronavirus spike protein should uh, stick to, right? So if you look at the wild type, you can see that there are a lot of space here, right? So it's not perfectly fitting at the ACE2 receptor. So fitting of this ligand and substrate is usually governed by thermodynamic equations and Gibbs free energy, you know. So in this uh, fitting, the Gibbs free energy is basically pretty high. So high free energy means the fitting is not proper. But after this D614G, uh, you know, the mutant strain can really fit nicely, just like lock and key mechanism, you know, the, with the uh, delta G that is Gibbs free energy in minus value. So it's so much efficient in fitting the ACE2 receptor. That means it's so much easier to spread from one person to another. So this is uh, the paper which has been published. So the title of the paper is that D614 G mutation in the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein reduces S1 shedding and increases the infectivity. So it reduces S1 shedding. Now what does that mean? S1 and S2 are domains of the spike protein and shedding means that it actually breaks out. So that breaking out of S1 and S2 domains uh, is prevented because of this 
uh, mutation to the glutamic acid you know so that is exactly uh, what is happening there is the ramification of this uh, mutation and uh, in real life scenario what is actually the implication of it it increases the infectivity that means spreading ability to spread from person to person has been increased because of this mutation so is this uh, unusual uh, for the virus to to get mutated no all living organisms are continuously mutated and evolve including human beings we are also mutating any uh, you know living organism which is uh, replicating is prone for replication errors and because of this replication error the mutants are formed and because of the mutation uh, you know the, the natural selection is happening you know so evolution is nothing but change in the allele frequency in the population over time the variance of the same gene is known as alleles and it changes the frequency keep on changing you know a haplotype frequency changes in the population so frequency of d614g is increasing in the population because it is more fit it's fit for the viral point of view, you know, virus can spread from one person to another much more easily because of this mutation. So variants can survive and reproduce better, that is the ramification of this mutation. So prior to March 1, as you can see, uh, it was S D614, so now it's basically it's G. Uh, variants, you know, the blue color is basically a, a G variant, the other one is uh, D variant. So prior to March 1, D variant is very common, but after March, uh, uh, you know, uh, March 21 to 30 uh, onwards, it's going to be a D, a, you know, G variant is very common around the world, you know. So right now it is D614G is a dominant cough 2 in the world. So is this strain, uh, the new strain is more deadlier? That is what the media reports. I have read multiple media reports about this D614G even in the in Indian media including Times Now. So uh, most of this media uh, you know, reports that it's a really deadly virus but it's not the case. So the difference in severity of the COVID-19, uh, there is absolutely no difference of the disease severity. So it is not deadlier but the problem is that infectivity is very high. That means transmissibility, that means uh, ability to trans, trans, you know, uh, transmit or spread in in the population basically it's a it's a pandemic disease right so epidemiology matters so infectivity is higher that means that community transmission of this new variant happens at much faster rate so of course it will lead to higher mortality rates too so that is what you should know but there is no direct cause and effect uh, because of this new uh, you know the variant it's more deadlier that kind of uh, uh, conclusion are invalid you know so usually in the viral diseases as infectivity increases severity decreases you know and if the uh, viral disease in uh, you know infectivity decrease then it becomes a lot more serious you know so here in this case the, the opposite is true because of the uh, you know the high rate of transmissibility severity of disease might be getting lesser well we really don't have any hard proof for this but uh, pro this is probably the corollary of uh, you know the, 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 the latest finding so does this have an impact on the vaccine development uh, well might not be that is the safest answer as of now so receptor binding domain or RBD of spike protein S is the most important for eliciting the immune response and it is a main target of the vaccine development including the Oxford vaccine Tadox and cough you know, so D614G mutation doesn't alter the RBD, that is receptor binding domain. As you see, the, the mutation happens somewhere in this groove, not exactly on this uh, receptor binding domain, the, you know, this green domain. This is where uh, the immune immunoglobulins and our immune system is, uh, uh, you know, uh, being responsive to. Uh, also, the vaccine uh, you know companies are looking this is the target component where everybody is looking for so not at this groove uh, where this mutation is happening so it doesn't have any direct implications thanks for watching and if you like this video please click thumbs up share it in your relevant groups and subscribe to my channel i will see you soon in my next video till then goodbye